All right, so we used to uh, have a block of wood and a hammer, we knocked the sleeve in. Uh, this sleeve is, it's a repair sleeve. You hear everybody say that they, the block is sleeved, that's what this is. And you bore it out till it's, uh, till the hole is 3,000 smaller than the sleeve. And then after I've done that for a few years and broke some sleeves and whatnot, Dad had this old, uh, this is a sleep puller for a tracker. So, we'll go into town. Yeah. See how easy that is? All right, so let's start it. And we'll just push, we just push it in with, uh, with that threaded rod. He doesn't like impact ranges. Nice thing about this is it sort of keeps it straight. It sort of keeps it straight as it's going down, so. We're leaning this way, huh? All right, give her a go. Yeah, so it's an issue with the impact wrench. I put oil in it and then it move again. But they're hard to push in there. That was extremely hard, but they're always hard to push in.
the It could move, believe it or not. I mean, from what we just witnessed, do you think there's no way it could move? But what can happen is it could settle. Theoretically. <laughs> yeah, and then and then we'd have the sleeve down the hole a little bit, and then the gasket wouldn't seal. The then the gasket wouldn't seal on. Oh, it'll make it. Yeah, it'd be just too much, too much for the gasket to take up. So now we put the mooring bar on it with a flat cutter, and we'll go around and we'll cut this till it's flat with the with the deck surface. I mean, for my first example on on video, I was hoping that it would go smoother than that. But it's really a, an, an air supply issue and uh, I need a new impact wrench. Hey, it's not bad to show how long shit could. Yeah, yeah, how bad it could go, right? The bad side. Every, yeah. every video shows everything smooth, you know? Yeah. But like, if we would have had that much trouble with one, because this is what we used to do, what we used to do, to stuff you can see that what we used to do smash, smash it with a hammer oh that's how you got them in yeah huh. and uh Probably. after about half an hour of that you don't have much left in your arms plus you're always running the risk that there's an imperfection on yeah, here up well no it'll crack it because it's oh. just cast iron yeah. Couldn't you just warp? Couldn't you fuck up the edges of it or something nah, too? Not really. It, well, I suppose they're probably in a little bit. They're probably in a little bit. But Mr. Anderson made us this. Yeah. Oh, to set on it. Every time he makes me a tool, he puts a... Uh, ye old sleeve driver. Ye old sleeve driver. <laughs> ye old sleeve driver. So every, every time he makes me a tool, he... Uh, Put something like that on it. Like yeah, I've got some that say uh, "COVID Tool Company." <laughs> so, all right. Well, we're uh, we're good on that. I think uh, we'll have some washing this afternoon. We'll get that um, top cut out, and then we'll bore it to uh, to the correct and right? bore it the same as these holes. Another thing I should say is that. Like, I know this is 3,000s because I measured it. If you were to go four or 5,000 press fit, you could still get it in there. But then you run the risk that this cylinder is going to be all around because you're pushing on that wall. So, well, th this was probably a little bit out of round anyway. It's just something you, you got to deal with every time. So ideally, you push a sleeve in and then you bore all the cylinders again. Right, okay, like I hit a few managers. If I get the right piece on here, man. Yeah. So this guy, we'll zero this gauge here. And then we'll go this way. Yeah, it's like three thousandths out. It's almost three thousandths out around. So it's a little But I measured them later on. Well, look at that even. It's already changing some. That's like a half. And these are old, you know, these these aren't fresh bores, so. See right there, it's it's 1,000. They're not fresh bores, it's a spare engine for the guy, so he's, he's a concerned with, with having it right on. And race engines, they always put so much clearance in them like that. That piston's got like 7,000 clearance in it, so. Is it mostly just important to just have them the same rather than have them a specific size? I would think that it's more important to have, uh, generally the damage that you do is because the cylinder's too tight, the hole's too small. So, so a lot of the, when I first started doing this, I was surprised that, like I would get a, I would get a block back from from an engine builder, from a machine shop that knows what they're doing. And I'd measure my piston and I'd have like 8,000 clearance in it. They're sort of covering their ass, I think. You know, they're sort of like, well, if it goes out there and it's a little bit loose, it's not gonna blow up. Yeah. If I have it a little bit too tight, it's gonna blow up. Or there's a chance it'll blow up, so. 
But yeah, there's a, every piston manufacturer has has a uh, has a clearance that they like. You know, the, depending on what material this this is this is aluminum hyperutectic, so it grows less than a forged piston. So if we were to put this in there, which is the wrong size, but if we were to put that in there, you could you could get by with one and a half thousand clearance, which is barely anything at all. Put a race piston in there. Obviously, that one's going to be that one's going to be six, seven thousand. And the only thing it really like if if, if if race cars had mufflers on them and everything, you'd walk up to them and they'd go, no, 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 because the pistons are flopping in the in the cylinder, but you can't hear it because they they got open exhaust. And then this this is sort of a piston that's between. Uh, OEM piston, although brand, old, new cars have hyper-tech pistons. But like a, ca a regular cast aluminum piston is what most older vehicles would have. And this is kind of between a forged and a, and a hyper or a, a cast. So. Alright, let's get some meat.